Circus Golf an absolute shambles. Ernie Els' damning assessment of the golf's new phase is a no-holds-barred one, and his fingers are firmly pointed at one man, Jay Monahan one of the faces behind the biggest merger the game has ever seen. While the stakes are getting higher and tensions soaring through the roof, clench your putters, you can't afford to miss this. No matter what side of golf you're on, Theodore Ernest Els is one name that echoes in the global community. Nicknamed the Big Easy for his six foot three stature and formidable swing, the South African golfer has had a rich career, stacking over 70 career wins and four major championships. As a living legend, the golf community never takes his word lightly. So when he recently sternly rebuked Jay Monahan, we instantly knew chaos would erupt. All right, guys, we all know the Live PGA merger has been signed and sealed. Run from it, hide from it. The seed will grow to be a rainforest all the same. But that doesn't entirely mean everyone should be a fan of it, Els in particular. Not only is he disinterested in the allure of Liv Golf, but also he's not a fan of Liv's team aspect. He doesn't even appreciate its 54-hole no-cut format. Yikes! Without mincing words, he condemned the Saudi-backed circuit and questioned its functionality. This is Circus Golf. Team golf doesn't work. It works maybe in a two-month, three-month happy season, but then play real golf. That's what I prided myself on, like Tiger Woods and some of these guys, getting yourself into majors and grinding. In a nutshell, it irks the legend to see his beloved PGA get affiliated with the circus. That being said, there has been no shortage of opinions about the PGA's agreement with the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund. Several big dogs in golf, like Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, have been outspoken in their displeasure of the breakaway circuit at several intervals over the last few months. Still, it's hard to imagine anyone being as blunt and brutal as Ernie Els' unfiltered take. Not only did he throw shade at the newer circuit, he completely rebuked the PGA's decision makers over their decision to ally with the Live Golf League. If you hadn't known already, apart from Jay Monahan's involvement, the framework agreement was brokered by tour policy board members Jimmy Dunn and Ed Hurley with the governor of the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund, Yasir al rumayan questioning their authority to go behind the backs of the players who were put in a difficult situation throughout the back-and-forth tussle between both factions, Els expressed the partnership deal was in absolute shambles and that the PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan would be relieved of his position if it were up to him. If this happened in my day, in my prime, there's no way he's around. No way and the board has to change because it's not right. Talk to us. Tell us what you're going to do. Don't just go rogue as a member of the board and come back with a deal and think we'd say, yes, you're affecting lives. You're affecting the professional game. It's so bad. Whether you're pleased with Al's rebuking the board members at Monaghan or not, it's worth mentioning the fact he's not the only one irked by the secrecy or lack of input from any of the other policy board members or players. From April, when negotiations began, down to the 6th of June when it got disclosed, none other than the aforementioned were in the light. As clandestine as it sounds, we mean it. Many of the biggest names in golf were totally out of the loop, including Liv's biggest critics, Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy. As a matter of fact, Greg Norman, the CEO of Liv Golf, only got to know about the merger through a phone call just before the announcement. As things stand, the odds aren't even in his favor to retain a place in the new league. There's a lot of guys who did a lot for this tour. They helped the tour and helped build the game. Are you kidding me? And then this BS. Nevertheless, Jay Monahan is far from being a community favorite. Apart from Els, several others have been detached from his philosophy, and who's to say the list wouldn't grow as time goes on? As more and more questions pop up concerning what happens next for golf, influential personas are being disillusioned, with some feeling Monaghan would have to bend over his back just to build bridges and regain the trust of everyone. The likes of Jordan Spieth and Xander Shoffley are sitting pretty comfortably on this table. They both feel the PGA commissioner has a lot of work cut out for him. 
Quite shockingly, though, unlike several of his peers, John Ram has openly declared a vote of confidence for Monaghan. Yup, you heard right. Despite being scrutinized for his moment of betrayal, Ram feels no trust issues whatsoever. Speaking in a news conference at Royal Liverpool, Ram stated he believes Monaghan needs time to follow through on the framework agreement despite what seems to be a mountain of uncertainties. As it comes to what he's been doing for us in the PGA Tour, I think he's done a fantastic job. And right now, after that happened, I only think it's fair to give him the right time to work things out. I still think they have the best interest of the players at heart. For now, all we know concerning golf's groundbreaking merger agreement, at least according to the press release, is that while the PGA Tour will spearhead the newly merged entity, each of the three tours in the merger would still be responsible for the behind-the-scenes operations of its own tour, things like enforcement of rules, site selections, and the likes. But when it comes to finances, it becomes a different ball game. The Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund will make a massive capital investment into the new entity to promote growth and success. The release even states the PIF would initially be the entity's exclusive investor alongside the DP, PGA, and LIV. Moving forward, the PIF will then have the exclusive right to further invest in the entity, including a right of first refusal on any capital that may be invested into the new entity. In a nutshell, Saudi Arabia, along with its public investment fund, will be a key player in the sport, being the sole investor while still having the power to refuse any other capital investment not from them is just as crazy as it seems on paper. As for the unknowns and uncertainties regarding the merger, no one can beat their chest and claim they know what happens next. Well, except the parties who brokered the deal in the first place. Who knows? There may be some secret conversations going on right now. Notwithstanding, we have got to start asking ourselves the difficult question. Why exactly are some of golf's biggest characters so against the prospects of a merger, or hey, the live circuit to begin with. For this, we would have to take a step back and put on our thinking caps. As things stand, the merger has put an end to what felt like an eternity of legal and verbal tussles between Liv and the PGA Tour, which is admittedly a welcome turn of events, but are some of the terms genuinely better than harm? We can't help but feel the PGA Tour being reliant on the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund for capital investment may ultimately lead to dependence on its benevolent benefactors. If something unforeseen happens and the PIF decides to withdraw its support from the PGA based on its own interests, it could gravely influence the financial stability of the tour. Surely the decision makers have to be thinking of that possibility, right? That being said, there's still the issue of public perception. As you probably already know, the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund has been under a lot of scrutiny from a lot of fans, even outside of the golf community, due to some of the Saudis' human rights records and political policies that have been criticized. With the PIF now backing the tour, there is bound to be lots of controversy and negative public perception. The PGA may soon receive backlash from several fans, sponsors, and stakeholders. Let's bring to mind Ernie Els' statement about Jay Monahan getting relieved from his role for siding with the circus. If things go south, a lot more people will be calling for his head. Do you think Monahan has given all he could offer for the PGA that is currently out of his depth? Or, like Ram, do you think he only needs more time? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with the latest news in the world of golfing.